The man that the Hawthorne board has put forward to be the successor to Jeff Kennett is Peter Nankerville. Peter, welcome to the studio. Good morning, Jared. Thank you for having me in. You got a degree in crisis management at the moment? Uh, I'm, I'm learning a lot on the, on the fly. Let, let's just start with a, why are you the man to lead Hawthorne for the next period of time? Jared, I, I, I joined the I joined the club as in a volunteer capacity back in 2012, and I've been on a journey with the Hawthorne Football Club in a governance sense since that time. Um, the club, as at this point, has made some really bold decisions in relation to uh, the appointment of Sam Mitchell. We've also made the bold decision in relation to the next biggest decision you can make outside coaches, where you, the premises and, and the Kennedy Community Centre we've committed to. And thirdly, we've made significant um, changes to our balance sheet so far as getting out of gaming. And the, those are all decisions that the club has made and it needs a need to be implemented and followed through on. So I believe that in terms of, and my commitment to the board was that I would stay on for three years to see those and other matters through. So that makes you a bridging president, essentially? I, I, no, I wouldn't call it a bridging president. I would call myself a, a long-standing board member with deep knowledge of the club and its people. Um, Jared, as you, as you are very well aware, football clubs are a unique environment. They are a collection of fragile relationships. And I think to have people at the club who have the tenure and knowledge of those relationships and how they're moulded and how they and people work together is vital. And I see myself discharging that role. Peter, does it represent, as was claimed yesterday, the very best of good governance to have led the committee to find the next president and to end up being the candidate put forward as the next president? Jared, I I, my, my view on that is that I was asked to do a job and I get asked at the football club to do lots of jobs. I did a job and I worked with um, the f talented board members and independent members, including Jeff Harris and Don Scott. And I believe that once that job was done, I was then invited to do another job. Did, did you complete the job you were asked to do, coming back saying there were no suitable yes, candidates? Yes, yes, we did. How is it possible that there were no suitable candidates to be the next Hawthorne president that you could find? Because we went through a robust process to do so. We identified candidates, we shortlisted, we interviewed, and we, had, and we didn't get to where we thought we would. Did you have a moment when you were asked in the second phase of that to be the president where you wondered whether it was appropriate to do so, having led that panel? Uh, uh, no. After, the, after that panel concluded... That was at the point that I decided to re-engage in a, in a process. So do you believe that you are, it is appropriate that you put yourself forward? I as do president? believe that. Yep. Were, were the nominations for a contested election hidden away? Were they not opened to the members in the same way that they had been, say, the previous year? My, Jared, my, the, the, the Hawthorne Football Club followed exactly the same process as the previous year. In, in actual fact, the uh, the knowledge to the members about uh, the uh, the vacancies was actually deeper this year because we actually had a presidential process, but we also we also advertised uh, the board vacancies and that process, and that was up on our website. Um, Ian Silk convened a nominations committee, and that went through a process of identifying a prospective candidate. So those who are not the endorsed candidates who say that that wasn't the case, that they're, that's an error. That... I believe so, yeah. Right. Right. Do, do you, does the club fear an open contested election? N not at all, Jared. Um, unique, football clubs are unique. They're a, com they're a combination of, of governance, a combination of passion, and it comes together in the context of, of, of an election. It's the members who, it's the members who decide. And, I, and I'm hoping that, that all of those members that want to see stability and continuity and consistency of decision-making coming through at the Hawthorne Football Club do get out and vote in this election. We've got so many, as I mentioned before, so many key, key priorities. And I, I announced yesterday that should I be successful as president, Richie Vandenberg would be the would be the vice president. And I think Richie, in terms of his reputation at our football club, in terms of his football knowledge and his footy IQ, is without peer. So I feel that in terms of a leadership team to take the club forward, uh, between Richie and myself and a very talented and committed board, 
we're, we're the right people. Those who would seek to run against, so Andy Gowers and Ed Sill, for instance. So Ed's got great heritage with Box Hill and a tight bond with Sam Mitchell. They're not really disruptive forces, are they? Ed, not at all. Ed, I've got a huge amount of respect and regard for Ed. We've worked closely for, over the years. Ed's been on club committees. Um, I, I interact with Ed regularly at the football, particularly the Box Hill games, but also uh, we talk frequently. And Ed's, Ed's, Ed's a, not a disruptor. He's a true Hawthorne person. The Cultural and Safety Review, which is occupying so much of our thoughts in footy at the moment. Uh, Jeff Kennett described it as the best and fairest. Eight. He'd had a fair bit of time to digest it. He described it as a bump along the highway. Do you believe that it's more than that? Uh, Jeff's, Jeff uh, is unique. He, he's got his own turn of phrase. I wouldn't have used those words. Um, it's a, The club has embarked upon this Cultural Safety Review uh, with a view to ensuring that what matters most is honesty at our football club. And we took the opportunity to honestly ask questions of our current First Nations players and our past Indigenous, our past First Nations players. Jared, you don't always get the answers that you want. And you, and then that's, I think that's, that's the, that's a test of leadership to actually take on those questions. You've got to ask the question, you've got to listen, and you've got to act. How would you depict what you read? Oh, it's horrifying, horrific. There's there's no other way of describing it. Did did the process lack guardrails that has essentially led us to where we are, where the reputations of previous Hawthorne, cherished previous Hawthorne employees has been damaged and now sits in limbo whilst trying to balance that up against the experiences that have been told and then we wait to see whether those families are confident enough to fully engage. Did, did the process lack the guardrails? I don't believe so, Jared. I think that if you try to engineer a process to put in to, to you, you'll be criticised of trying to engineer an outcome, and that's that's not what we're about. We were open and honest and transparent, and as soon as the red flag went up, we we're off to AFL integrity straight away. As I have done at other stages in my career at the Hawthorne Football Club, I have. I think we've demonstrated a, a really productive relationship with the AFL. So so we we took it to them. Then, unfortunately, it was the media outcomes that that brought this uh, out and and it caused significant hurt and harm at, to to Alistair Clarkson, Chris Fagan, Jason Burt. They they they're they're great people at our football club. And, it, and it, it, it really does hurt that they're hurting. Would this process have been done the same way if they were still employees of the football club? Uh, yes, it would have been. The, the period when you received the report to when it went to the AFL, so I think there's a feeling there. So I think there's a misconception is the families who conducted their interviews as part of your cultural and safety review then spoke with the ABC. Was there a lag where those families feared that what they had been prepared to say was going to be buried? I, I don't believe so. We're talking literally just a matter of, a matter of days here from when we received the report to when we engaged with the AFL, and we did engage with them very early in the piece and then presented to them the report, and then and, and the media followed uh, pretty shortly thereafter. I, you know, for the more serious the allegations... Jared, the more serious the process has to be to review, and I'm, I won't be critical of the AFL in that respect. What would represent an adequate resolution from here? Yeah, um, Jared, I'm, my my background is as, as a lawyer. Yep. I've been a lawyer for thirty five years. Um, I've been across. I've worked in royal commissions. I've been across major disputes. I've uh, you know, dispassionately when you when you step back, it's it, it's getting people in the room together. Uh, it, the Hawthorne Football Club. And it was was reported this morning. We we did try to get uh, some mediation discussions underway, but it was very preliminary and and talking with the lawyers. I think one of the most positive elements of the terms of reference that have been cited by produced by the AFL is the opportunity for mediation. And I'm hoping that if 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 the if participants come forward um, and and come forward 
we've got we'll have that opportunity to sit in a room. So it feels to me like there are that there's the two aspects to it. That the, so there's the the cultural piece, but then there has to be a football outcome. Does there not? Is within our football construct and the AFL has said this in the statement they released, is the only jurisdiction the AFL has is the AFL rules. So how do you find a football outcome to something that is that is culturally troubling? Uh, I mean, the football, the, the, foot, the AFL, the, the AFL has, uh, as the custodian of the game, established a framework that we all operate in. And there are really important respect and responsibility policies and, and, and we all abide by those. So the the foot the football out. I mean, I think the people outcome is more important than the football yep. outcome, um, and I think the football outcome will follow. Are you? I am curious on your level of confidence that everyone might end up in a room together. Uh, Jer- this is this is proving a very uh, difficult and complex process without without a doubt, and the there is going to. Uh, the the AFL has worked extremely hard through the panel and the terms of reference to try to come up with a, a culturally sensitive and safe way for these particip- for the p- complainants to to participate. Uh, I I can only hope that that um, that happens and that and I can assure you and our your listeners and our Hawthorne supporters. That we will be, we are, and will continue to be constructive and engaged, and and particip- participating this in this to try to get the best outcome for all. Is part of that so? Right from the start, Peter, it feels like you, you have said that financial restitution is 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 a is a piece of this. That the pain of compensation. Why, why is that uh, in your mind as as an appropriate step to those who are aggrieved? I, Jared, I think it's the nature of, of of a dispute in the sense that what happens in a dispute is that that a, the, the the complainants present and 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 tell their story and their and their hurt and explain their hurt. Um, you know, we we and 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 those that have had allegations made against them get the chance to respond, but um, in 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 the context, there'll be no winners here. Everyone is going to walk away disappoint hurting and we and and we have to take whatever steps we can to try to minimize that hurt how aware are you at the moment peter of the uh the attitudes and the experiences of a a critical mass of indigenous players so if there are four or five families in the report there are at least 16 others um are their experiences vastly different to what's there and how do you, so separate to the AFL's investigation, how does the club marry up that there's this experience and then there's this experience? I think that the, in terms of the, the cultural safety review that we did undertake, I think notwithstanding there were some awful allegations made in there that there were, there were also findings and comments from our current First Nations players, that they find the Hawthorne Football Club to be a very culturally safe environment for them to to work at and in. And I think that whilst there's always the opportunity to further develop the programs and, and further develop the um, uh, the behaviours at the club, that which we commit with committing to do and will con- continue to commit to do, I think I think that on on balance, um, we're we're very happy with our, the football club and what we're trying to do. Is there acronym acrimony between Hawthorne and potentially its greatest coach, Alistair Clarkson? That's pretty raw at the moment. I I hope not, uh, Jared. I uh, Alistair was an incredible servant to the Hawthorne Football Club. 17 years as senior coach, four premierships. Alistair came in in, in in 2005 and we were not great on field. And then what he and the coaches and the playing list of that that era be, were able to do was, were, was in an equalised competition was nothing less than remarkable. 
I'm hoping that in the fullness of time, uh, Alistair uh, will we, we will be able to have a really strong and positive relationship with Alistair. Yeah, but at the moment, Hawthorne's actions have led Alistair Clarkson to be in a very difficult personal position. It would seem that as and as has and Chris Fagan and 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 Jason Bird and that's and and that's we don't want them in those in that space. I mean, they've um, this. Uh, I should say they're. Whilst I haven't spoken to Alistair or Chris directly, I know that there are other discussions going on between those people and other people at the football club. So the lines of communication are still open. I was interested to read this morning, is, is, is do you have a legitimate fear that Hawthorne might be sanctioned at the end of this from the AFL? I hadn't quite contemplated yeah, I know, that, I, I must I, say. I think that uh, I, that's a hypothetical question. And I think that the... The, the the hypothetical question is 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 not worth I think answering in this context because we've we're, we're in a process and we've got a we've got a long way to go. Peter, the men's program. So I played at the start of uh, at start of the show Jeff Kennett's statement on SEN from May last year. But from twenty three on, if we've got this right, we're in for another decade of competitive football. Is that wouldn't be your timeline anymore? Would well, it, I don't. Peter? I think I think twenty twenty three is ambitious. Uh, Jared, that's. Um, but in terms of our our objective as a football club and our uh, and our sort of global goal and what we're challenging ourselves to do, is to remain a a very success successful club. The Hawthorne Football Club is used to that success. It's in our DNA. It's uh, it's winning premierships is what we're about. So we've set ourselves the target of winning another seven premierships by 2050. And that's and and I think that into with Sam coming on board and coaching this year, um, I think the football public had the opportunity to take notice and see what Sam is capable of doing. And I think the 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 fact that we've we've got a very young list, you know, more, playing more players under 23 than any any other team, uh, an age appropriate leadership group, um, with senior players, more senior players with the the Sicilies, the Warples. Hardwick, Amon. I mean, we're we're I, we're putting together a team that will not only play finals but win finals. What's your guiding timeline for the return to contention? I I I'm not going to put that sort of pressure on the football department or the coaches. Um, they uh, we we at this stage are seeing success uh, each week when we go out on the park. I go out on the ground, and we and we and we judge ourselves by those successes that we set. How significant, Peter, will it be to replace the Tasmanian sponsorship? Should it be that in the in the coming weeks or months, Tasmania achieves the dream of being granted a future license? I think that Jared, the the opportunity there's a the opportunity there is that we will have time to 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 um to gl- to bridge that at maybe three years. Um, I think that there's also the opportunity, and I intend to head down to Tasmania next week to meet with the Premier, to talk about what the future of the Hawthorne Football Club does look like down in Tasmania. We've established a, uh, a membership base of approximately 8,000 members down in Tasmania. That's over 22 years. We don't want to give that up in a hurry. So if, if there would be the opportunity for us to be able to play games down there in the future, notwithstanding a Tasmanian team, just imagine at York Park, Hawthorne playing Tasmania, how that would go down. Well, you would be the, uh, you could be the natural immediate rival for Tasmania. Ab- ab- absolutely. And with 22 years of passionate supporters uh, on board, um, you know, we're going to work pretty hard to keep them. Yeah. So do you think you could play home games still once Tasmania enters the competition? Some- this, this is obviously subject to working out a fixture, fixturing with the AFL, but it's also working out subject to coming up to the appropriate financial arrangements with the sponsors that we'd have, to have down there for that. Peter, how engaged do you think um, Hawthorne fans are with an election process, which is, I thought, I th- always think an interesting conversation across any footy club. Yeah, I, I hope they're really engaged this time round. I mean, we've got, we've got those big challenges and opportunities that I mentioned before. And I think that the the opportunity for the Hawthorne Football Club supporters and members is to really um, put their stamp on what they want their club to be like 
for the for the immediate future. And having people like um, Richie Vandenberg on board and together with a uh, a committed board, including um, subject to the obviously the members' wishes, um, three quality female candidates in the form, um, Katie Hudson, Anne Marie Palazzi, and Maria Louis. Um, I think that there is the opportunity for a modern, diverse board with the commitment to um, discharge those 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 obligations that we've made. Peter, it's nice to meet.